Hello and welcome to another edition of Cup of Joe Luca, my podcast about the real estate business and industry. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how it has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, with all the volatility in the stock market and uncertainty about uh, the COVID-19, how long it's going to last, how profound it's going to be, some folks are concerned that we're going to have another crash in the housing market. And I've had a few of my clients say, oh, Joe, is the, have value started to come down yet? When do you think the market is going to crash? You know, this is nothing like it. Uh, what we experienced from 2006 to 2008 and then a little bit after that. I understand why a lot of folks think it may be like that. Um, but it's apples to oranges. And, um, you know, when a glean some information from uh, Steve Harney's uh, blog, Keeping Current Matters, which is a resource for all uh, realtors who like to stay on top of things. Um, And he actually, in his most recent blog post, quoted Ali Wolf, uh, the director of economic research at the real estate consulting firm of Myers Research. And um, there are a couple of things that he pointed out why this is different than what we expanded excuse me, experienced before. One, mortgage standards are nothing like they were back then. Today, and I have been telling this to my clients for a long time, it's different because you need to demonstrate with pay stubs, tax returns, document that you can pay the mortgage back. You have a revenue stream. You have income to pay the mortgage back. Before the last crash, we didn't have that. You didn't have to demonstrate everything. There were anything. There were no doc loans, no income verification loans. All right. Um, it was really it was difficult not to get a mortgage back then. Today it's tough to qualify. All right. Uh, in fact, the Mortgage Bankers Association releases a mortgage credit availability index, which essentially summarizes. Um, the availability of mortgage credit at a specific point in time. And the higher the index goes, the easier it is to get a mortgage. And right now, it's extremely low. You know, um, during the housing bubble, it was almost at 900. And now we're a little bit under 200 as of today. So it's a very different time uh, today than it was before the last crash as far as a mortgage. Number two, Pricing. Prices are not soaring out of control. We've actually been experiencing a slow, steady rate of equity accumulation, uh, which is healthy. That's what you want. You don't want to have um, crazy equity accumulation like was experienced to the six years leading up to the height of the housing bubble. All right. You know, if you were to look at a graph comparing housing appreciation back then to now, Right now, it's much more uh, stable, okay? Back then, you'd had rates that were going up 8.6%, 6.5% a year, 8.5%, 8.7%, 12.5%, 11.4% for the six years leading up to the crash, whereas now, the last six years, we've been been experiencing rates of 4.4%, 5.2%, 5.5%, 6.4%, 4.8%, 4 4.7%. So it's very stable rate of equity accumulation. So that's something else that bodes well uh, when you're contrasting those two periods of time. That bodes well for the strength and the stability of today's housing market. You know, normal appreciation is 3.6%. So while we're a little bit higher than that, we're not significantly higher. All right. Um, And it's certainly not accelerating beyond control as it did in the early 2000s. Number three... We don't have a surplus of homes on the market. In fact, we have a shortage of homes. Inventory has consistently been tight. Buyers, there have been more buyers out there looking for homes, ready to buy homes, qualified to buy homes, than there have been homes for sale. So it's basic economics 101, supply and demand. We have a limited supply and we have greater demand. So that bodes well for uh, the stability of home pricing. You know, in 2007, we had 8.2 months of inventory home, as far as homes for sale. Today, we have about 3.1. Now, that's an aggregate average of a, the whole country. It may differ in different marketplaces, 
But the aggregate, 8.2 back then, 3.1 now. We do not have a lot of, of uh, houses on the market, okay? Um, next, houses became too expensive to buy. What was happening back then is that the affordability formula, um, which has three components, the price of the home, the wages earned by the purchaser, and the mortgage rate available at the time. 14 years ago, prices were high, wages were low, and mortgage rates were over 6%. Which, just as a point of um, comparison, the historic average for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 8. So 6%, even though it's almost double what we have today, is um, it historically is still low. But it's a lot higher than it is today. So today, prices are still a little high, but wages have been increasing every year. And the mortgage rate is only about 3.5%. So that means the average family pays less of their monthly income towards their mortgage payment than they did back then. You know, back then, in 2006, the percent of the median income needed to purchase a median-priced home was 25.4%. Today, it's 15.5%. So that is a much lower percentage of your household income, all right? Also, and lastly, today, people are equity-rich. They're not tapped out. In the run-up to the housing bubble, people were using their homes as an ATM. So they would immediately withdraw any equity once it built up. They learned their lesson in the process because when equity accumulation did not uh, continue, was unable to be sustained at that rate, of, and prices did not continue to go up, um, they found themselves in a whole pile of trouble. You know, prices have risen Nicely, as I said earlier, over the past few years, you know, today over 50% of the homes in the country have greater than 50% equity. That's significant, okay? Uh, By owners, they, they haven't been tapping into the equity in their home. They're leaving it there. They learn their lesson. So you buy a house for the average price is about 290,000 bucks. If the value goes up to 350, you don't immediately go to the bank and take out that cash by doing a refinance. All right. Just to do a quick comparison, back then in 2005, um, the equity cashed out when someone refinances the the house and takes the mortgage, the money out. 2005, it was 263 billion. 2006, 321 billion. 2007, 240 billion. Compare that to in 2017, 71 billion. 2018, 87 billion. 2019, 74 billion. So the three years before the crash, 824 billion was cashed out. The three years leading up to today is 232 billion cashed out. All right, big, big difference. Okay. During the crash, home values began to fall. Sellers found themselves in a ne- negative equity situation, which saw huge discounts on sales, foreclosures, short sales, etc. Um, that's not going to happen today because the, the fundamentals do not support that. So the bottom line, if you're concerned that we're going down the same path that we did back then, you need to re-examine the fundamentals because we are not approaching a housing crash. What we're experiencing right now has nothing to do with the economy. It's all about the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic. So don't have fears. The housing market is still strong. If you have any questions about any of this, you can DM me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Tumblr, Snapchat, Joe Luca Realtor, or you can just do it the old-fashioned way. Call or text me, 401-580-9797. Thanks. Have a great week. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.